welcome to Truth or Politics. I'm your host, Darlene Price, and tonight we have the uh, my hucklefish, Dan Gibson, with us again. Uh, we have a couple of stories. First, we're going to hit one that we just posted. This was an exclusive story we just posted. I'll just read it to you. Supervisor Jared Carson. This is he's the supervisor for uh, uh, for for the phone systems around here, Highland Telephone. He confirmed, and you know what? I should have put that on there. I apologize, Jared. I didn't put that. that you were a supervisor for Highland Telephone. My bad. Um, he confirmed that, that the whole north part of McCurry County phones and internet were out today because idiots, and yes, I left it in there because you do this, you're an idiot or just a criminal or just the worst kind of person. Idiots took a chainsaw and an axe to telephone poles for the copper. They chainsawed one pole, chopped another one down with an axe, and started a third one. This occurred just south of Beulah Heights Road at about 7 a.m. this morning. No one has been arrested, but police were notified. This affected the fiber optics of numerous outlets. Cell towers were also out. The destruction of these telephone poles was really serious and very dangerous because many people could not do call 911 for a long period of time. Anyone with this information on this dangerous theft, please contact either the McCurry County Sheriff's Office at 606 376 Two three two two. That's six zero six three seven six two three two two, or Highland Telephone. I did put Highland Telephone in there. Highland Telephone Company four two three six two eight two one two one. That's four two three six two eight two one two one. Folks, folks, that, that that really put a lot of people in danger. You know, if this is your idiot cousin or whoever did this, and you know who it is, you need to dime them out, okay? Because we have a lot of people that live. You know, for those watching us out of state, because we have people in California and stuff to watch the show. This is the Daniel Boone National Forest. We have a lot of people that live remotely here. We have a lot of retirees who are not in the best health. They count on that 911 system. And when their phone, hard phone is out and their cell phone is out, they can't dial 911, you know, the cell phone towers are out. You know, you really put a whole lot of people in danger when you clowns did this. They need to be hunted down. They need to be charged with a felony, the F word, felon. Um, because, you know, this put a lot of people in danger, and, and this was super expensive to have all these crews out there, put, you know, as fast as they could. And i got to say, Highland Telephone Company, um, you guys did a good job, because that was some undertaking to, within a day, have three telephone poles up and running, and then, you know, there's so many fiber optics and everything affected, and you guys, you guys got the job done, so I got to commend Highland Telephone Company um, and their fiber optics people and everything for getting, for getting it done. That, that, took, that was a big undertaking, so they get some kudos for that. Okay, so that's the local stuff. What we're going to cover tonight, we've covered a couple of times. Go ahead. Can I comment on, yes. on what we're doing? Um, you mentioned that they should drop a dime on if they know who did this. Um, yeah. These gentlemen know what they're doing, and they evidently are willing to hurt people for money. Yeah. And that type of person we do not need in our community. No. So please, please do. Please, and, and you know what? If you know you anything can, about it, please let us yeah. know. Yeah, and, and, and you know what? You know, people will, 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 you can do this anonymously. You know what I mean? Uh, if you're not comfortable calling the sheriff's office or, or Highland Tele, call, call me. Uh, 606 376 5931. I've never burned a, you know, a source ever. Go ahead. And plus, it's a small amount of money. They will cause thousands of dollars in damages for pocket change. Yeah. It, it, what what he said, what Michael, Michael Mann just said, I don't know if he, they could hear you back there. My, what Michael Mann just said is um, for the amount of copper that they, that they have, it's just chunk change compared to the thousands and thousands of dollars. That it's Highland Telephone Company, and now, you know, now the, the, the people paying for Highland Telephone Company are out. Not to mention the danger that they caused. Go ahead. People have suffered, but, and could have died because of this. Yeah. And to do that knowingly for money, for small change, uh, tells me that this person doesn't need to be on the streets. No. He needs to be. And it's probably more than one because you had a chainsaw and then you had axes and chainsaws going. And it, it looks like this it was some, maybe simultaneously. So it may have been one, probably this, more than one person. This is nothing we want in our community. No, no, it's dangerous. It's just flat out dangerous. And I like what uh, you said earlier. Um, they really need to go after the people buying this stuff. You know, if you're out there and you're buying this copper from these idiots, 
Um, I hope they track you down too because you know better. You know what they're doing. You know that these are the people. In fact, you, when these people show up to sell this copper, you people need to be calling the sheriff's department. That is the method that would actually stop it. Yeah. If, if these people who are actually making it profitable for them to do that, if, if they were held liable, then it would stop. Right, right. So we need to deal with that. Okay, now on to this story, which should be the headline story. I understand in Israel we have a war going right now, and I understand, you know, but, but, but you know what? That's not the only news that's going on. You would think that, according to Fox News and the CNN, nothing else is going on in the world. Okay, well, um, you know, with all due respect, yeah, yeah, there is other news going on. And one of the biggest news stories that needs to be covered, and it's not really getting the coverage it should, um, is the fact that whistleblowers on Capitol Hill, federal government employees, are a select group, and we're going to get into specifics in a minute, are giving whistleblower protection for the first time. Now, why is this important? Literally, I wrote the book on it. Okay, I, I was a federal government whistleblower. I testified not once, but twice in front of the United States Congress, in front of a select Senate committee, and then in front of a congressional committee. Okay, um, I, I, I know what these whistleblowers are going through, the retaliation that comes with it. I literally wrote the book on it. The name of the book is Bordergate, What the Government Doesn't Want You to Read. And what it basically is, hey, good, hey, good. But well, basically, we're live right now, Peter. What it basically is, is we... We testified about whistleblower protection and the need for that. And myself, and, and we at one point in 2007, we had 700 federal government employees actually come and testify. They had to run two rooms about the retaliation, the terrorism that went on from the Pentagon and from you know Capitol Hill, trying to shut up and silence whistleblowers. Well, what's coming out in this story? Why is it so significant? Is what we're learning, because for the first time, some people have some w real whistleblower protection. And it's just one bombshell after another. These hearings, by the way, go to our Facebook page. Uh, I think I put it under my Darling Price Facebook page. I don't know if I did it under Truth and Politics. I have posted the hearings. I actually posted the, the, uh, the, um, the Congressional um, National Intelligence Center what the report says. This is the official report from the Pentagon, what it says, and, and excerpts from these hearings and the actual hearings. And again, it is just one, should be top storyline, one bombshell after another. And it is getting some coverage. It is, for the first time. They, they are covering it, but, but it's, not giving, it's not giving what it deserves. The best coverage of this has been on the History Channel. The History Channel has done... A magnificent job of just covering this and doing one special after another on this. So kudos to the History Channel. And basically, what it is is the genesis of this is it is proof positive. Whether you believe UFOs and you now they're called UAPs, whether you believe those exist or not, put that aside for a minute. Let's just say for argument they don't exist. Okay, and when I'm done here, I will convince you that they do. Okay. But let's say they don't exist. What is proof positive from the documents, from the whistleblower testimony, and from a Senate Intelligence Committee is that the Pentagon is a gaping black hole of lies, lack of transparency, and billions of dollars just being misappropriated, by the way, from we don't know where, and the generals and the people running the Pentagon have basically given the double middle finger to the U.S. Senate Committee and to Congress, telling them, we don't have to answer your questions. We don't have to go into a skiff, even though you ordered us. And what it comes down to is, all of a sudden these senators and these congressmen are like, wait a minute, this ain't supposed to work this way. That's not how, you know, government oversight, we're, we're the oversight, we oversight you. But you know what the generals know over there and people running the Pentagon? No, you don't. And what's not being said, well, on, on the History Channel it's being said, and some of the good investigative report channels it's being said, what's not being said on the mainstream media is this. They know they own those congressmen and senators because the Pentagon 
belongs to the military industrial complex, which buys their campaigns. So I'm telling you, had I, when I testified in front of Congress or the Senate, had they ordered me to cough up something or had they ordered me into a skiff and I told them, no, I don't have to go, I would have been arrested for contempt of Congress. That's what should be happening here. And you need to ask yourself, why isn't that happening here? Why aren't these senators who are acting so pissed off, yes, I said it, so angry that the Pentagon is just in defiance of them, okay? And they did come up with a report, okay, after, after being ordered by the Senate Intelligence Committee. A year later, they came up with a report. And we're going to get into some of the details of this report here in a minute with the whistleblowers. They did come up with a report, but they're refusing to go into a skiff. Now, who is the Senate Intelligence Committee? These are people who are, they are cleared for these classified documents, okay? So what the Pentagon keeps saying is, no, we can't tell you anything. We can't give anything. You're not cleared. Yeah, they are. This is the people who are cleared. These are the people who are supposed to be oversighting these black op projects, who are supposed to be approving all the billions of dollars. And guess what? They didn't know this was going on. And according to whistleblower testimony, it's because they were mis... The Pentagon was misappropriating funds from other projects. Okay, that's a key word here, misappropriation of funds. Folks, there are thousands of people over the past 30 years that are sitting in prison, and I would have gone to prison, you would have gone to prison. If you were a federal government employee and you misappropriated just pennies to the dollar, your ass would be in jail right now. You would be in jail. But the Pentagon, it, they've got documents showing, and whistleblowers saying, no, I've seen the documents. Because the senators actually asked in these hearings, and you've got to go watch these hearings. you just got to. Because it's just, boom, one bombshell after another, what these people are saying. They've got the documents to prove it. I'll go in the skip and show you these, okay? Is they have been misappropriating the U.S. Pentagon and these officials, under the guise of investigating UAPs, UFOs, have been misappropriating who knows how much billions of dollars to reconstruct, research, um, back channel these vehicles that they supposedly have, these crashed aircraft that they have, and they've spent billions of dollars doing this. So, and then hid it from the people, the gang of eight people who cleared to know this. And then when they ask, hold on, when, when, and, and, and i got to say, I've never been a fan of Senator Rubio, but i got to say, he's leading the charge on this, and he's demanding, no, you're not getting away from this. You're going to do a report. You're going to come here, and you're coming into a skiff. So now they're in a gridlock. And you know what it reminds me of when you watch these hearings and you watch these congressmen and senators, and they're just getting real frustrated because these whistleblowers, they ask this one whistleblower, are you in fear of your life? Have you been threatened? Yeah, I've been threatened. These, these are, and we're going to go into the quality of these whistleblowers, okay? These aren't, you know, some nut job. These are people who, have, who are, are the creme de la creme experts in their fields. In any court of judge, any, any lawsuit, anywhere, any court system, they will qualify under what's called dauber. They will qualify as an expert witness in their field beyond expert witness. We're talking literally rocket scientists. We're talking literally commanders of top gun units. These are the quality of people that are testifying. It's unbelievable the quality of these people. And they're being threatened and they're being intimidated. And so Congress is saying, no, we're, you will be protected. And so far they've been pretty much protected. And now what's happened is because the first three very brave souls, and I'm telling you folks, it ain't fun. It is no picnic to get up in front of all those people in those cameras, and you got five minutes to, to tell your story, okay? And you got to cram, you know, ten years of what you've seen in five minutes and thousands of documents, and then they start grilling you, okay? This is not a picnic. This, what these guys are doing, they're putting themselves at risk. They put their families. There's no gain for this. There's no reason for these experts to lie about this. And put themselves in danger. And that's what's happened. Okay, I got before I go on the specifics. Go ahead. You say these things, <clears throat> and there's absolute truth in what you say. But there's other truths out there as well. And you 
touched on those. Uh, these same people who are holding, withholding this top secret information uh, that could make a difference in the security of our nation. Yeah. Um, we may have those devices, uh, but to let our enemies know that we have them may be detrimental to our interests. And you just told us that these congressmen that we've got are not trustworthy. They're all bought and paid for, every one of them. And uh, who are you going to trust with this kind of information? Well, when and it comes, if they're withholding it, okay. that information in a patriotic manner... I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Here's why. A lot of these videos, and I posted these videos. Okay, what's... Let me get into some now some specifics, okay? Did you have a question or anything for Okay, yeah. well, now let's... That's the overview. But let's get into the weeds now. Okay, what happened is... Back in 2017, it started, okay? You had uh, a guy, the secretary, the, the former deputy secretary of defense. His name's Chris Mullen, okay? Again, this ain't somebody who's just somebody off the street, some nut job. This is the former Dep deputy secretary of defense under two, under two different parties, okay? He was under a Republican Party and then a Democrat Party. So, so this is not political. This guy served under two different parties. You know, presidents. This guy knows his stuff also. I mean, his, you know, this guy Mullen, his track record of, of all of his knowledge and everything else is, is just, he, he would qualify as an expert in his field, okay? He goes to the Pentagon and he sees this stuff and he's like, why is this classified? This shouldn't be classified. He, he gets permission. He declassifies some of these videos, okay? That's one of them is the Go Fast video. It, get, it gets leaked, or he declassifies it. It goes to the New York Times. So, 2017, the ball starts rolling. Okay, so the New York Times, Washington Post, these videos, you know, go out. Okay, and people cover it. There's some coverage over it and everything. Okay, what that does is, is the Senate Intelligence Committee is like, what else you got over there that you're over-classifying? Because already, everything that's been released so far... You know, I had a top secret clearance. I can tell the difference between what should be classified and what shouldn't, okay? And this guy should have the definite knowledge for that, too. What they're doing is they're over -classified. They're making everything classified. And my opinion is they don't want to go into the skiff with the people who are cleared to see this. I'm sorry, but the Senate Intelligence Committee has a higher clearance than the people at the Pentagon telling them no, Okay. They are cleared for this. And I understand what you're saying, but there's no reason why these generals and these idiots at the Pentagon aren't going into a, a secured environment in the skiff and justifying misappropriation of funds. Well, if okay? you look at these videos, um, if you pay close attention in the, in the beginning or in the end, it says, uh, it'll have a little place on it, it says, uh, this video has been sanitized by this or that one. In other words, uh, it's still that uh, they've gone through it and made sure that there were well, no, no not secrets, all the videos, no, no secrets left out of them. Wrong. That that's incorrect. Okay. And, and you know why? Because that's some of I've them seen. are. That's what I've seen. But the other ones are not. Okay. Now there's other videos that whistleblowers. Once these first ones yes. came out, yes. then other whistleblowers who here's what also came out. That the Pentagon has been paying thousands and thousands, millions of dollars for a task force to study UFOs and UAPs, okay, for years, okay, and been lying to the public about it because every time, nope, there's nothing here, nothing to see here. Well, now it comes out that officially in the Pentagon is a task force being tasked with collecting evidence, collecting videos, and finding out what these things are. Okay, so the head of this task force, he goes to the OIG, the Office of Inspector General. He says, look, I got people telling me that these things are creating a, a hazardous thing. They're coming into our airspace. I've got commercial pilots. I've got air, you know, airline pilots. And I got military pilots saying one instance, and part of the testimony, you're going to see this, one of these things flies like we, right between two wingtips of two F, uh, fighter planes. Okay, this creates a danger to our aircraft. These things, you know, are, and, and it's proof positive they've got them now, and they've got them on flip. For those of you who say, oh, there's no evidence, 
wrong. Here's the evidence. I'm going to go through some of this. Some of this of what's come out. Some of this is leaked. After it was leaked, then the Pentagon verified that this is accurate. Now, what I'm about to read to you is absolute verified testimony, documents, FLIR video, uh, radar, and uh, eyes. Okay, so this is what's been verified already. Okay, first off. You have a uh, leak from Navy pilots and Navy radars. Navy warship commanders and others involving at least three separate training incidents. Okay, three biggest incidents. There's one off the coast of Baja, California. That's the one the Nimitz that some of the, the Go Fast video was released from. Okay, one off the coast of Florida and one off the coast of Virginia. So you've got, what you got to understand, folks, is these training exercises. This isn't just one little boat out there. Okay, this is an aircraft carrier group. You have an aircraft craft carrier which has, what, a thousand people on it, its own radar centers. The aircraft carrier then has, you know, hornets, uh, you know, some of our most, you know, skilled pilots, fighter pilots, these F-18 F hornets, F-18 super hornets, okay? These also have nuclear capabilities. Also, you have warships surrounding this aircraft carrier. So you got an aircraft carrier. A bunch of our top, we're talking top gun pilots. You have warships, okay? And the one off the coast of Baja, California also has a submarine. All right, so what happened was the one off Baja, California back in the early 80s, okay? And this has all been testified to, and the, this stuff has been released, okay? This has been verified by the Pentagon. The Pentagon has said, yes, this happened. Yes, we don't know what this was. That should scare the crap out of everybody that this thing, it's, they call it the Tic Tac. The re reason this, this, this so excites me is this is exactly what me and my son saw not too many years ago. They have what, what so they're calling it a Tic Tac UFO, or two, now they're called UAPs, okay? They changed the name. They chased this thing, and what they testified to in these hearings just recently, this year this happened. This year, just a couple of months ago, this happened. One bombshell after another. That this thing was able to hover at 20,000 feet. Within a split second, go to 80,000 feet. Okay? And then move in capabilities that every expert says, to include the Pentagon, we don't have the science to explain this. We don't have this. And every expert is saying, no, it's not China. It's not Russia. We don't know what it is. It's beyond our science. The Pentagon report says that. Yeah, this please. is beyond our science to figure out what these things are. So, wait, wait, wait. That's one incident. Then you have, I think, the Roosevelt. It's off of the coast of, uh, was it the Roosevelt? I get them mixed up. Okay, so then you have another aircraft carrier group with an aircraft carrier, pilots, warships. They didn't have a submarine with that one. Okay, multiple radar hits. Multiple visuals, multiple flare. Go back to the Nimitz for a minute. Okay, for people say, oh, oh, it was a radar glitch. Oh, really? So it was a radar glitch on four aircraft, four expert top gun pilots, one of them a commander instructor top gun pilot, okay, of the carrier group, okay. And the carrier, aircraft carrier's radar and the warship's radar. All of these radars caught this. Then you have flare. What is FLIR? Forward-looking infrared. FLIR on at least three of these jets. That's one incident, plus the visuals. Now, either all these people are freaking crazy, who, by the way, had access to nuclear capabilities, or they're not, or this happened. Then you have off the coast of Virginia, pretty much same thing. Different-looking UFO, UAP, uh, but they've got it on camera. They got it on FLIR. They got eyes on it. They got it on radar centers, okay? Then off the coast of Florida, another one. The same type of mobility. The one off the coast of Florida was significant, I think, too, because what it showed, and then I'm going to get into the Customs Border Patrol video that was released just about a month ago. What also these videos are showing, the FLIR is showing, is these things have the capability of mock speeds that no human body could ever withstand, okay? Traveling and then cutting through water in the ocean. Like it's nothing. Like it, 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 it's like these, these things don't know the difference, or they can travel through water just like they can through airspace and displace 
air, space, and water. Okay, I'm telling you, every whistleblower, every expert in this field, even NASA, oh, by the way, I posted under my Facebook page, NASA now is coming <laughs> forward. They're doing a whole investigation. They had a whole NASA panel. You had, there's no bigger experts or rocket scientists than the ones in NASA. And, you know, for years, NASA has denied this, too. And I, I have shame on NASA. I always I was called NASA, never ask or say anything, because that's what they do. <laughs> they have lied about this, just like the Pentagon has. All of a sudden now, un, you know, un, you know, undeniable proof is out there that whatever these are, they exist. Oh, now it's what we're investigating it. And NASA has come out, and there's a whole board on this, just released, and I posted this. Go watch this board of experts, scientists. Every one of them are saying, this ain't ours. We don't know what it is. I mean, that's the bottom line here. We don't know what this is. You know, that's a problem. That's a real problem. And here's what I think also. One of the reasons they don't want to go on this, two things. One of the reasons the generals and the Pentagon don't want to be drug into a skiff because then they got to answer real questions under oath in a skiff. They don't, they don't get away with it. Okay, It's because they have been misappropriating these funds and they haven't tracked it. It's been a black hole. They could do whatever they want and you can bet, you can bet what's going to come out is fraud. They have committed fraud in unanimous proportions and that are, they are scared to death to be forced by Congress by the Senate committee into a skiff where they have to answer these questions. They can't say, oh, nobody's cleared. No, you're in a skiff. Don't get any more cleared than that with the most cleared people on earth to hear this information. Show me the money. Show me where you tracked this money and where you got it from. That's what needs to happen. And let me tell you what else needs to happen. When they can't answer that question or they keep refusing to answer those questions, they need to be put in handcuffs. I'm telling you, Anybody else appearing for a Senate Intelligence Committee like that testifying, if they refuse to go into a skiff, if they refuse to clear, to give this information, you would be in contempt of Congress. And I'm telling you, watching these congressmen and senators, it's funny. It's not funny, but it's funny. It's almost like, good. This, you deserve this. It reminds me of the old black and white movie, the very first Frankenstein movie. When Dr. Frankenstein makes the monster, and the monster gets up, and he busts through the walls, and he realizes, oh, God, I created a monster, and the monster's running off to do whatever, and Dr. Frankenstein says, oh, God, what have I created? That's the moment we're at with this Senate committee. You created these people. You created the military-industrial complex who bought your campaigns, and now you're in a fix. Now... Who are you going to put in contempt? Who are you going to put in handcuffs that ain't that the military industrial complex ain't going to say, oh, okay, Mr. Rubio, uh, we'll, 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 just, we'll just primary you. We'll run somebody else against you in the next primary and you're gone. And they'll fold like a cheap suit. That's the problem. You know, I've talked about this. People, people don't understand why <laughs> campaign finance reform is so important. This is it. This is the biggest evidence of why campaign finance reform is so important. Because if we don't get it, we'll never know. And, and here's the other thing, folks. This is happening because these whistleblowers, and only these whistleblowers, are getting real, real whistleblower protection. Now 30 plus more are coming forward. And you have the Customs Border Patrol, my former agency, release some more videos of this stuff, okay? Um, this wouldn't be happening if they didn't feel a level that they were getting protected. Now, just think of what else we could learn about our government and the secrets and the misappropriation of funds and the billions of dollars here and there that nobody's supervising. Um, what else could we learn about our government and the corruption if we had real whistleblower protection for all government employees, what would happen then? That's important right now. I know you're itching to say something. Go ahead. You have conceded that we have the UFO misinformation and that they're keeping secrets from us about UFOs. And I agree with you. I think most of our nation agrees with you that they are keeping these secrets 
when they should be telling us all about it. We'd be entertained by it, knowing what what they know. We think. On the same level, what makes you think they wouldn't be keeping secrets about the level of our technology? Okay, if they did have such devices, devices that could could make other defenses of other nations uh, seem ridiculous. Uh, do you think they'd want to tell everybody that? No. no they wouldn't. Okay. But then that's what a skiff is for. That's the whole well, purpose of clearing people like Marco Rubio. Well, it gets right back down to do you trust these senators that we've been talking about? That are well, they, okay, painful? here's what I don't trust. I don't if you, trust, if the, you have I trust skip. them more than I do the Pentagon with no, the Pentagon has a blank check. This is what the, you're saying. It is not okay for the Pentagon and the military industrial complex to have a blank check for billions of dollars unsupervised by anyone and to be stealing it from other things. How do we know they're not well, that's that? That's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. That uh, we have a situation that may not be resolvable. Um, we have uh, uh, several entities who are uh, seem, think, seem to think that they're doing the right thing for their needs, and yet um, there's no solution that I know of. Yeah, there is. Go into the skiff. When you're ordered by the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee, who's cleared more than you are to have this information, you will come and prove to us where you spent this money and where you got it from. If you don't show up, you should be in handcuffs. Like I'm saying, that's these same senators that you just said are bought and sold every day by the same people they're telling you. Well, if, if they don't do something about this, then they're as bad as the Pentagon. I yes. totally agree. But yeah, I, I what, think that's what what, okay. The, then why, why have a what skiff? What is the solution? They go into the skiff and they prove where they spent this money. I don't think that'll work. Well, I do. I wish it would. I, I think I, th I think that I think the Pentagon is a big gaping hole of billions of dollars that you know no, it is. there's no supervision. You know okay, it is. that ain't good. Oh, totally. That's not good. Okay, that that can't be. And here, here's the other part of this. Okay, yeah. let me get into some of these three whistleblowers. Who they are. Okay, so, and what they're testifying to, okay? Here's the people who have come forward, and this is on the record, okay? You have four, by the way, four different radar systems, two, two nuclear aircraft carrier, carrier radars, nine different Navy fighter pilots, including a squadron, squadron commander, Lieutenant Ryan Graves, an F-18 Super Hornet pilot, who's been with the Navy for 10 years, and an aerospace engineer. This guy's literally a rocket scientist, okay? Four, four forward-looking infrared FLIR cameras mounted on Navy fighter aircraft and dozens of eyewitnesses who are decorated veterans and current military. Okay, now, if all these people are crazy or they're lying and making this up, why do they have access to billion-dollar pieces of machinery? Okay? And nuclear weapons. And nuclear I, weapons. I totally agree with you. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Here's what they're testifying to. These things are putting us in danger. One of the incidents, this is the this is the the Nimitz one off the coast of Baja. What he testified to is this thing was able to jam our radar centers, our radars. Sure. Okay. That puts everybody at risk. Also off the coast of Virginia, that pilot who was also, by the way, a rocket scientist. He literally has a degree in rocket science, and he's a pilot. And what he testified, what he has testified to is, look, this is a, this isn't an isolated incident. There are dozens of these incidents where these things are putting our pilots and commercial air outliners at risk. Hello, the next, how many people out there are getting ready to fly? You getting ready to take off out of New York? Probably go over the ocean, okay, or fly out of San Diego. How would you like to know that pilots? Commercial airliners are still being their commercial. The the, uh, the uh, one of the testimony is that the private companies are telling these pilots, "You're not reporting this. If you do, we will fire you." They're being intimidated. Okay, that puts all you people out there going to fly in danger. This is a huge safety issue for anybody in the air. This is a huge safety issue, and the answer can't be well. You're not classified. You're not cleared. Or, well, we're the Pentagon. We get to do what we want, and we don't have to answer to anyone. That's not the answer to this. I'm sorry, but you don't put civilian airliners at risk, our military at risk, our Navy pilots at risk, 
and just say, sorry, we can do whatever we want. Sorry, that's not right. That's dangerous. Go ahead. You just described <clears throat> some far superior technology than what we have been led to believe that we have. Right. You described technology that could subdue anybody at any time with anything, ray guns, particle beams. I mean, if they're this far ahead in technology, uh, then, yeah. then they're capable of that. But yet, out of the millions of sightings, and, I, and I've seen I've seen <laughs> UFOs myself, uh, out of the millions of sightings, I haven't heard of one ray gun being fired yet. I haven't heard of anybody getting no. vaporized by a UFO yet. No, and Have that's... No. So what does that tell you? And, that and, tells me something. Yeah, but here's here's the other point to this. That tells me that hopefully whatever these things are, wherever they're from, they're not here to harm us. We well, hope. they're from the United States. They're not from the United States, okay? okay. Every well, expert I've were. talked Most to... Most likely they wouldn't shoot their own planes that would they? Right. Well, here's the problem. And this is what this guy testified to. Now, I, I want to read his... I want to read this guy's credentials. I'm just okay? heckle fishing you. No, 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 I know. But, 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 no, that's good because, no, that's good because those questions need to be answered. Okay, David Grush, you really need to go and watch his testimony. First, I want to tell you who he is. This is not some idiot, you know. This guy was a decorated combat officer with the United States Air Force during the war in Afghanistan. He was previously assigned to the National Geospatial Interagency Alliance, Okay, and the National Reconnaissance Office. Okay, you are not an idiot and get assigned to these assignments. Okay, you're the creme de la creme. Okay, from 2019 2021, he was a representative of the NRO to the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. Okay, so what happened was this stuff gets leaked. The, uh, you, they have the first set of hearings. Rubio says, Do a report. Okay, I want to report, I want to know what's going on over there. And they picked this guy, whose pedigree is unbelievable. This guy knows his stuff. <laughs> they, the Senate Intelligence Committee says, we want you to go over to the Pentagon, and we're ordering the Pentagon to show, because this guy's clear. This guy has NASA clearance. This is the most cleared individual walking earth, because he's been a part of all of these super high clearance stuff. Nobody's... Nobody's had more clearances than this guy. He's more cleared than the idiots at the Pentagon, okay? So, the Senate Investigative Committee says, not only are we ordering you to come back, generals, with a report, because you're BSing us and we ain't going to put up with it. Thank you, Rubio. Um, but also, we're going to send this guy, because he knows the stuff, and you, you're going to give him the stuff, and he's going to come back and tell us, okay? So, what does he come back and say? He comes back and says... <laughs> Unbelievable stuff. This is what he comes back and says, and he testifies to this. He's seen the documents. Okay. He says, Information on these vehicles is being illegally withheld from Congress. Let me repeat that. Illegally withheld from Congress. Okay, because there are laws that you can't just be in defiance of Congress. Okay. Grush told the brief. Grush said that when he turned over classified information about the vehicles, these are the UAPs, to Congress, he suffered retaliation from government officials. He left the government after April, after April, after a 14 career, career okay, because as soon as he goes over there and tries to do his job, they start retaliating against him. So, Jonathan Gray, a current U.S. intelligence official at National Aerospace Intelligence Center, NASA, confirmed the existence of exotic materials to the debris fatty. We are not alone. This is what he says. He says, not just him, this other guy, these experts, they go over there, they get the information, and they say, I've got it. If you want, I'm not going to show it here on, in front of God and everybody for this hearing, but if we go into a skiff, I'll give this to, to you. And he's turned over stuff, okay? So, he gets retaliated against. He goes to the OIG. The OIG, he gives them the, these reports, okay? This is the Office of Inspector General. And the Office of Inspector General uh, thinks this is so important, and this has never happened before, never in the history of history. And I've dealt with the OIG many times, and I'm telling you, they vetted this. 
So the Office of Inspector General vets all of this information. They see it. They're cleared to see it. They send it stamped urgent to the Gang of Ape. Okay? You people need to do something. Pentagon's out of control, basically, is what they're saying. You need to do something. This stuff is real. Um, we need to be finding out. And what this other guy testifies to and these pilots testify to, here's why. Here's why it's important to find this out. It's not our stuff. Everybody's saying that. NASA has said that. Okay? Pentagon's now saying that. And I'm going to read from the report. These pilots, whoa, 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 whoa. If this isn't our stuff, we better be figuring it out real quick. Because here's why. It's a race now. Whoever gets this intelligence first and figures this out, we're screwed. If this isn't us, if one of our enemies gets a hold of this technology and they get it first and they reverse engineer this stuff and figure it out, we're over. We're done. Whoever gets this first. This is why this is important too. To oversee the... Here's why. The Pentagon has had this stuff now, according to these documents, these downed aircraft, these things that the reverse engineering. Now, either it is a fraud, and they've spent billions of dollars in 30 years trying to find out how these work, and they've come up with nothing, okay, that they can show. That's why they're not going to the skiff. Or they have it, and they can't figure it out. That's scary, too. <laughs> I mean, I don't know which is scarier. It's the big fraud. It's all BS, and it's a big fraud, and they spent billions of dollars and with no oversight. No oversight. Now they're in contempt of Congress. Or they have these things. They've tried to reverse engineer them, and they can't. Our top science can't figure it out. Okay, here's what the Pentagon says. This is their report. I have posted this report. You need to read it. I'm going to read the excerpts of this that are super important because sometimes when it comes to government agencies that I worked for for 20 years, okay, I'm telling you, you got to read between the lines of what they're not saying. U.S. government recording includes occurring from November 2004, that's the Nimitz, to March 2021, okay. So, they've supposedly had these aircraft since, you know, 30 years, but they're only issuing a report like they've only been looking at it from November 2004 to 2021. That's what this report covers. Okay, what happened before? Where's all the money you spent before the Nimitz incident? By the way, they're only going from that because there's proof positive that this happened now. Okay, so what were you doing before 2004 with billions of dollars of the taxpayers' money? Okay, but what were you doing before that? Because now there's classified documents that these guys are testifying to. No, they've been looking at this before 2004 and lying about it. And they were specifically asked, where did they get the money to do these projects? Misappropriation was the answer. Misappropriation. That's, a, that's a, the F word, felony. Okay, so this is what the Pentagon's own report says. They're only from 2004. They just kind of gloss over. We're not, we're not going to give you information before 2004. Okay. Executive summary. As a result, of the UAPTF concentrated its review on reports that occurred between 2004 and 2021. Okay. Big question. Why? Okay. Why did you just start at 2004? Oh, because that's the only place where we've been dimed out. You know, before 2004, you got no proof that we've been doing this, okay? So that, that, that's my answer to that. The majority of which are resulted from this new, new tailored process to better capture UAP events through formalized reporting. Okay. Most UAP reported probably do represent physical objects, given that a majority of UAP were registered across the multiple sensors, like I've been saying, to include radar, infrared, electro-optical, weapon seekers, and visual observation. So, just these three incidents prove positive that these things exist. Sounds like to me that they are admitting that they do exist. Yeah, they do. They say that here. Okay. They say that. In a limited number of incidents, UAP <sighs> reportedly appeared to exist. Here's what else they're admitting. Listen carefully to this. And This is from the Pentagon. In a limited number of incidents, UAP reportedly appeared to exhibit unusual flight characteristics. 
These observations could be the result of sensor error spoofing or ob observer misrepresentation and require additional rigorous analysts. Okay, But then they go on to say, our analysis of the data supports the construct that if and when the UAP incidents are resolved, they will fall into five potential explained exploratory categories, airborne clutter, natural atmospheric phenomenon, USG or U.S. industry developmental programs, foreign adversary systems, and the catch-all other. Okay, so they are, what that's saying is, we have these reports that we can't explain. They're under other. That's the Nimitz, that's uh, Virginia, and that's Florida. Other. Okay. I think that one of the important categories that they have in that is the one that talks about developmental programs. And you have experts coming forward with NASA saying, none of our programs are these. That's already established. I'm telling you, the, the people are coming forward from, you know, uh, one of the heads of the, uh, uh, what's the big research thing? I got a brain fart. I'll think of it in a minute. It's come forward and said, no, it ain't I ours. Speak we don't have that. I experience, Darlene, that when I was in the military, I was involved in the most top secret, highly developed technology of the time on a little island in the South Pacific called Johnston Atoll, one of the most <coughs> top secret places on the face of the earth at the time. We did not tell anybody what we were doing. I we absolutely would not tell because we were told that if we let anything at all get out about what we were doing, and this was from the top down, that we would spend at least 20 years in Leavenworth prison. I, I hear what you're saying, but no no super secret whatever should go on supervisor. You should not have a blank check and be able to misappropriate funds and have nobody oversighting you. That's the whole... Our forefathers set up U.S. Congress and Senate to be the oversight of money. I agree with that. Okay? And it ain't happening here. That's what's coming out here. They're giving the double minor middle finger to the people who are supposed to be oversighting it. So, let's go on here. This is, this is the, what they say. And this is in black print. UAP clearly pose a safety of flight issue and many pose a challenge to the U.S. national security. Let me repeat that. It's in bold print. The Pentagon is saying... Right there, the A, these exist, and B, UAP clearly pose a safety of flight issue and may pose a challenge to U.S. national security. And the reason they're saying that is these things have entered into controlled airspace. Okay, when our people are out doing their functions, okay, when they do that, the... The National FAA post, this is controlled airspace. So when the Nimitz is out there doing its thing, we got our pilots, and the Roosevelt is out off the East Coast doing its thing, the FAA will, will post for all the commercial airliners, they'll be flying here today. Okay? This is now controlled airspace. Just like one of the whistleblowers coming forward is saying, uh, kind of like over our nukes, they have an incident now where he, this guy's coming forward saying one of these things came right up and it was the size of a football field, visualized by everybody. There's police reports on it and everything else, where it came in over a nuke place, one of our, you know, one of our fields that have nuclear capabilities. And it messed with the radar systems there. It's been documented. This has happened many times. Right. So... This is now a danger to our airspace. It's a danger to our nu nuclear capability. And for the first time, the Pentagon is admitting this. They're saying these are real because they have to. Trust me, had all of this video not been leaked and these experts not come forward, the Pentagon would still be lying and stealing money from the taxpayers. That's what would be happening. They have no choice now. Thanks to the Senate committee who ordered them to do this and whistleblowers coming forward and being brave enough to testify and put themselves at risk. Okay, so let me go on and read some more tidbits from this. 
UAP would also represent a national security challenge if they are foreign adversary collection platforms or provide evidence of potential adversaries that developed either breakthrough or disruptive technology. Okay, so what they're saying is we don't know who these are. They don't know. They don't know. So, here's, here's the other thing. No standardized. Here's what else is coming out, but these pilots are saying. There has been no standardized reporting mechanism existed until the Navy established one in March 2019. After all this stuff gets leaked, what these Navy pilots are saying is, look, you got to do something. And I'll, granted, at least the U.S. Navy came out and said, we're going to protect our pilots. You're going to have a platform to report this stuff. And they created one. And sure enough, as soon as the Senate committee and the Navy said, you will report this, they're not saying asking you to. They're saying you will now will report these things, okay? And you will be protected. Now the sky's opening. Now you got, th what, 30 more at least whistleblowers coming forward, radar operators and everybody else, and you got customs employees re releasing stuff. That would have never happened unless they got real whistleblower protection, which all federal government short employees should have. Here's what else this report says. Just since they started in 2019, let me repeat this, just the Navy's reporting system started in 2019. Just that. Of that, 144 reports originated from USG sources. Of these, 80 reports involved observation with multiple sensors. Let me repeat that. Just since 2019, since the Navy gave them a platform to, here's how you report it, and you will be protective, boom, 144 reports, 80 involve observations with multiple sensors. Okay, so you can't say it's just somebody crazy seeing things. No, multiple sens sensors. Hang on, there's more. Okay, and they say this. Again, official Pentagon report. And of those 80, it says, a handful of UA peer appear to demonstrate advanced technology. In 18 incidents described in 21 reports, observers report unusual UAP movements, patterns, or flight characteristics. And what the people testify live that you can go watch is nothing we have can do what these things are doing. Nothing. And these experts will say, are saying, to include NASA experts now, are come from, we don't have anything like this. We don't know what they are. We hope that it's not our adversaries, but nothing, our known science knows what this is. We can't figure it out. These are the literally the rocket sciences from NASA, from the experts, the experts. And then it says... Some UAP appear to remain stationary and winds aloft, move against the wind, maneuver abruptly, or move cons at considerable speed without discernible means of propulsion. Let me repeat that. With no discernible means of propulsion. In a small number of cases, military craft systems pro processed radio frequencies, energy associated with UAP signs. In other words, they're sending out these radio frequencies that are disabling the capabilities of our aircraft and our aircraft carriers. This is not good. Okay, so it goes on to say um, U.S. development programs for and ever other been, with exception of one instance where we have determined with high confidence that the reported UAP was airborne clutter specific. So one incident of these 18 to 20, of these, uh, what is it, 18, no, of these 241, I think it is, of 144 incidents, what they're saying is one of them, we were ever to, to, you know, debunk it. One. Go ahead. Darlene, if you personally had information that if it was divulged to the world, it was information that would, could and would be used by parties on this earth to annihilate mankind. I mean, there are lots of people out there who are very bad, very bad people. Proof is in in Middle East right now, um, and you knew that that this information that you had that you were about to divulge might and most likely would end them in mankind on this earth. Would you divulge that information? If the Senate committee ordered me into a classified skiff, 
No, to show no 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 couldn't trust these no, 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 then, then I would go into the skiff and say that and say but I can show you where the money was spent okay you would say what I could show you where the money went you was you would just talk about the money you wouldn't talk about the actual information that might at least that they're refusing to give up anything other than this report they're not showing show me the money mm -hmm. okay you cannot have a government. Okay, this is why we're oh, what coming up on forty trillion dollars worth of debt, you know, and, and the Pentagon is a big part of it, and the military industrial complex. I'm just posing questions. I don't know the answer. I, I know, but questions. when you have a Pentagon and a military industrial complex so out of control that they can misappropriate funds and have no oversight, we're over anyway. Okay, um, that ain't good, and. Perhaps that answers a big part of why we're coming up on $40 trillion worth of debt. Okay? This is not good. No way, I don't care what information you have, you should have a blank check of the taxpayer's money with no supervision on how to spend it. Nobody should have that. And that's what's going on. This is the big bombshell of this. If you don't believe in UFOs, UAPs, believe this. This is what's going on. This is what's coming out in these hearings. And th to me, that's as big as a bombshell as what these UAPs are. You know, whether you care about the UAPs or not, what you should care about is the black hole of the Pentagon misappropriating funds. For how long, we don't know. You know, uh, they have no, no, you know, they've just basically got away with stuff that other people are going to jail for. Okay, let's go back to the report. Other. Now, remember that category of other that they can't explain. And there's a whole bunch of other. Other. This is, again, in the report. Although most of the UAP described in our dis database probably remain unidentified due to limited data or challenges to collection of processing or analysis, we may require additional scientific knowledge to successfully collect on, analyze, characterize some of them. Let me repeat that because that is a bombshell. That is a Boom! Although most of the UAP described in our database probably remain on it up due to limited data or challenges to collection process analysis, we may require additional scientific knowledge to successfully collect on, analyze, or characterize some of them. In other words, this is beyond our science. They have admitted the Pentagon. I didn't and, hear them say that. I yeah, it is. I heard them say that they may require additional scientific Evidence. That's the same thing. Mm, yeah, it is. That's what so. they're saying. They're saying, we don't have the science to figure this out. That's exactly what they're saying. Go when ahead. I was on that little island, the rest of the world didn't have the science to figure the things out that we were doing either. 67. Okay, okay. But we're talking about this report right now. Okay. All right? So, okay, so UAP pose a, so here's the probability. This is again. UAP pose a hazard to safety of flight and could pose a broader danger if some incidences represent sophisticated collection against U.S. military activities by foreign government or demonstrate. So in other words, what they're saying is, if our adversaries get this first before we figure it out, and by the way, that's admitting they haven't figured it out. I'm, I don't think so. Well, I, I, I don't, think I, I think, I think. I just got through saying a while ago that if our adversaries get it, um, it would be very bad, and therefore maybe we shouldn't admit it or say it or let them know it. Well, I think that they haven't figured it out. Here's what the whistleblowers are saying, what they've seen. They don't. They haven't figured it out. Um, they. It is beyond our science, and they're praying that we figure it out first. That's what the whistleblowers that I trust, who have, who are the experts who have come forward and testified to. That's who I believe. I believe the whistleblowers. And that's what they're saying. I don't trust the Pentagon and what they're saying. I think that, you know, they did, never did come forward and say, you know, hey, th these are ETs. But, and they did not come forward and say we have crashed aircraft. They're lying about that still. And you have whistleblowers saying, I've got the documents. I've got it. You know, here's the meat. Let's go into a skip. I'll show it to you. And the Pentagon's saying, no, you're not. 
You do that, we're going to throw you in jail. They're threatening this guy. In fact, that one guy asked him. I just told you they would do that. They told everyone on this island that if okay, they divorced, they Okay, but you should not, and, 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 I, and, I, and I think that's bull crap, it'll okay? Be 20 years in prison. And I, I, I believe you. I that's believe true. you. However, no government agency should be unsupervised, okay? Again, this is big S that the Senate Intelligence Committee, who is cleared for this, these people are basically giving them the double middle finger, and they're not going into the skiff. What they need to do is go into the skiff and give them the information. We're out of time. One last question. Do you have one last What about you? One last question? Okay. I have a last question. Real quick, because we're out of time already. Is there any information that you think we should keep secret and not tell anybody? Well, this, they could go into a skiff. Well, you've still got leaked possibilities there. Well, it's getting leaked anyway. Look what's already been leaked because people are pissed off that they're being retaliated against because they're telling the truth. And they're diming out the Pentagon that the Pentagon is lying about this stuff. The Pentagon is misappropriating funds. The it Pentagon should be in jail. It is very frustrating. So, I don't know the answer. I wish I knew the answer. Go into the skiff and show them where you're spending this money. Show me, it's like that movie, show me the money. <laughs> That's what Rubio needs to say. Show me the money. Get into the skiff, show me the money, or you're in contempt of Congress, and I'm putting you in jail. That's what needs to happen. Rubio, I know you're not listening, but if you are, that's what needs to happen. We're out of time, folks. <laughs> we thank you. Thank you, Dan, for being my hecklefish. I appreciate it. We thank our live studio audience tonight. <laughs> and thank you, Michael Mann. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and we will see you next time on Truth or Politics. Thanks.